you're here because I'm interested in the Victorians. You're here expecting to be transported to another place in time. I'll try to deliver that so you're probably pretty perplexed by what it is that I'm starting off talking about. Why on earth, how shameless, is my Facebook page up there? What do you now know about me that you didn't know before? Well, I've got the same jacket on, so it must be the real me. You now know that I love Oscar Wilde and that I've performed the crucial sacred ritual of pressing my lipstick lips onto his gravestone because he's so marvelous. But you probably know a lot more. Fortunately, it's a fairly small resolution picture, so you can't read absolutely everything. I'm gonna guess that almost everybody in this room has a Facebook page. I'm gonna guess, even though we made you turn your cell phones off, that you like posting things, and indeed that you're updating your status every moment, and that you choose very carefully which you you have out there. So this is me. When I'm on another social networking site, I become someone completely different. I have a little cat at home. She's a rescue kitty from the Austin Humane Society. Her name is Zemfira, after a Russian character from a Pushkin poem. She's adorable, she's charming, and she's my alter ego. And Théophile Steinlein's poster of her, the Chat Noir, a way of advertising avant-garde and decadent art at the end of the 19th century, that's who I really am. Chat 1896 Noir, the little black cat from the last millennium, from the last century. And if you look at my tags, you'll find out all sorts of things about me and my interactions with other people, but which one is the real me? And I'm an honest sort of person. I don't have a 4chan account. I don't know whether any of you do either. What's great about 4chan, and that's one of its major claims to fame, is no need for a username, no need for a password. You need no idea about who I am or what I am. I can post anonymously. I can be anyone that I want to be, and indeed, the founders of some of these entities have been having long debates in the press recently. Mark Zuckerberg, happy family man out in California, invites us to see Facebook as an ethical statement. Having two identities, Mr. Zuckerberg says, for yourself is an example of a lack of integrity. The days of you having a different image for your work friends or coworkers and for other people you know are probably coming to an end pretty quickly. Based on the stock sales for Mr. Zuckerberg, maybe all kinds of things are coming to an end pretty quickly. But he makes this an ethical question. Is it a good thing for there to be two of you? Me in my velvet jacket and me as a little black cat. Chris Poole of 4chan takes exactly the opposite idea. Identity, he says, is prismatic. There are many lenses through which people view you. Google and Facebook would have you believe that you're a mirror. But in fact, we're more like diamonds, faceted and multiple. So now you're really perplexed. Was this really going to be a talk about social media given to you by someone whose specialization is 19th century drama? What's up with that? Well, there you go. Jekyll and Hyde without the hashtag for a moment. We think of the Victorians as being potentially hypocritical, having multiple identities. And I think that idea of the double identity, the double life is often closely connected to a particular novel. Robert Louis Stevenson's 1886 guilty pleasure, Jekyll and Hyde. Robert Louis Stevenson creates a doctor character, comes from a feverish dream, he says, trying to excuse himself later when the critics were shocked by the scandalous and the lurid quality of the novel, creates a doctor who wants to find a better or a worse self, at least to find another self. He treats himself and then addicts himself to becoming the Mr. Hyde, the other self, the other person, unable to live happily within his middle-class, comfortable lifestyle in the West End. And our two authors that I've mentioned now, Oscar Wilde, my hero, and Robert Louis Stevenson, insist that this double life thing is a problem. Both of them make a point of asking us a question about it. In the middle of the importance of being honest, Oscar Wilde has one character say to another, I hope you've not been leading a double life, pretending to be wicked and being good all the time. That would, of course, be hypocrisy. Stevenson, who's not quite as frivolous and not quite as witty, he's not quite as humorous as Wilde is, asks us the question more directly, a question I think we can ask ourselves in 2012 just as easily as we could ask it to ourselves in 1886. Have you ever wished you could be somebody other than yourself? Our social media allow us that, at least in a certain sort of way, and Victorians depended upon this. Wilde created the notion of a personality, that who you were was a kind of almost dramatic character. You made up a self for yourself, and you get a really clear sense, I think, of Wilde's self-fabrication if you look at, literally, the little photographs that he gave out as souvenirs to friends and people who went to his plays. If you know his novel, Picture of Dorian Gray, 
you know that it's all about remaining eternally young. So I'm going to do wild in reverse. Old wild in his crazy beaver cap and his famous beaver coat. Is this the real wild towards the end of his public career, but before difficulties? This is Oscar Wilde at the height of his career when he was putting his first plays on. Is this the real him looking a bit svelter, looking a little bit more elegant? Or is this him more or less the day after he bought that famous coat that he was wearing when he's just finished being a student at Oxford? Or I'm going to show you my favorite Oscar Wilde image. Is this the real Wilde? Tricked out in his satin breeches, leaning up against a bit of neoclassical wallpaper just after he finished his studies, inviting us into a realm of beauty, of decadence, of art. So which one do you pick? And would you pick all four? And would you want them all on display? Wilde gives us multiple personalities, and he does it in a very specific genre. He creates something called Oscarisms, that through everything that he writes, they're short, paradoxical, and funny. Oscarisms are always 140 characters or fewer. Some of you may recognize that count of 140 characters. So just a couple of Oscarisms. Always forgive your enemies. Nothing annoys them so much. You've only used 50 characters up, so the hashtag is still there for you. You've got space. True friends stab you in the front. You've only used up 30 letters there. You're in great shape. The only way to get rid of temptation, a longer one here, is to yield to it. The only way to get rid of temptation is to yield to it. I can resist everything but temptation. 81. Experience is simply the name we give our mistakes, one that all of us in the middle of the fall semester, I think, can relate to. 44 characters and a famous one, to love oneself, is the beginning of a lifelong romance. 47. If you search online, hashtag Oscar Wilde, guess what you get? Be yourself. Everybody else is already taken. <laughs> Some cause happiness wherever they go, others whenever they go. And finally, Buenos dias, decía Oscar Wilde, un único deber es el deber divertirse terriblemente. Y eso hice. If you hashtag Oscar Wilde, you'll find yourself learning lots of languages. He has a global popularity, not only in Spanish and English. Wilde put himself out there in images and short phrases the way we put ourselves out there as well. We're going to take a little break now, but I'm going to take you to the space where Oscar Wilde performed his multiple personalities, the City of London, when we return in a few moments. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 